the story animal language part 1 r dr do little cats meet men and polynesia before moving on to the explanation of the lesson animal part 1 let us know about the author hugh john lofting he was an english author trained as a civil engineer who created the classic children's literature character of dr do little it first appeared in illustrated letters to his children written by lofting from the british army trenches in the first world war the story animal language is about non human animal communication that show similarities to human language animals communicate using a variety of signs such as sounds or movements this is a story about a doctor and the name of the doctor was doctor do little one day doctor do little was sitting in his clinic talking with the patient who was cat's meat man who had pain in his stomach the doctor and the patient were talking the patient advised the doctor to get give up being people's doctor and be an animal doctor the cat's meat man said this because the doctor had the knowledge about the animals also and he had written a book on cats which was a wonderful book when dr do little and cats meet men both were talking the parrot named polynesia was sitting in the window enjoying looking at the rain and singing the parrot when heard the conversation between the doctor and the patient it kept quiet and heard the conversation when the cats meet men left the clinic polynesia flew off the window and sat on the table polynesia said the man which had just gone out was right polynesia continued and said that the people don't know that you are the best doctor in the world so now you take care of animals and they don't care about you doctor said to polynesia that there are lots of animal doctors polynesia replied that yes there are lot of animal doctors but all are not good like you now polynesia wanted that doctor should give up being people's doctor and should start being an animal doctor polynesia started to give information to dr do little about the animals first it said that do you know that animals can talk dr do little replied that yes he knew that parrots can talk but the new thing that the doctor came to know was that parrots can talk in two languages first is the people's language and second is the bird's language polynesia now said few words and the words were ka ka oi e fi 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 doctor didn't understood these words and just looked at polynesia polynesia now translated the sentence to the doctor is the porridge hot yet now learning new words and animal language made the doctor very excited he took a notebook and started writing the new words now dr do little knew that animals have their own language so polynesia became doctor's teacher 
and told him new words. And doctor was noting down the new words sincerely in his notebook. The dog named Jip came in at the tea time. Polynesia said to Dr. Dolittle that Jip was saying something to you. Dr. Dolittle was confused because he thought that Jip was just scratching his ear and said nothing. Then Polynesia explained to the doctor that animals do not always use their mouth to talk. Whereas sometimes they talk with their ears, tail and feet. Jip moved one side of his nose. This meant that Jip was saying something. In few days, with the help of the parrot, doctor learned the language of animals so well that he didn't need any help of the parrot. After learning the new language, doctor gave up being people's doctor and he became animal's doctor permanently. Meanwhile, the cat's meat men did the mouth publicity about Dr. Doolittle that he had become an animal doctor. Old ladies began to come with their pet animals who had done overeating of cakes. Farmers came from far away with their cows and sheep to get good treatment from Dr. Doolittle and all the animals and Dr. Doolittle was happy and satisfied. Let's start with the reading of lesson number 17, Animals Language. Section 1 It happened one day that Dr. Doolittle was sitting in his clinic talking with the cat's meat man who had come to see him with a stomach ache. Why don't you give up being a people's doctor and be an animal doctor? Asked the cat's meat man. The parrot, Polynesia, was sitting in the window, looking out at the rain and singing a sailor's song to herself. She stopped singing and started to listen. You see, doctor, the cat's meat man went on. You know all about animals, much more than what vets here do. That book you wrote about cats, why, it's wonderful. You might have been a cat yourself. You know the way they think. Listen, you can make a lot of money doctoring animals. Then Dr. Doolittle got a fine big pair of green spectacles and the plow horse stopped going blind in one eye and could see as well as ever. Section 2 Soon it became a common sight to see farm animals wearing glasses in the country round Puddleby and a blind horse was a thing unknown. So it was with all the other animals that were brought to him. As soon as they found that he could talk their language, they told him where the pain was and how they felt and of course it was easy for him to cure them. There were so many animals that came that he had to have special doors made for different kinds. He rode horses over the front door, cows over the side door and sheep on the kitchen door. Each kind of animal had a separate door. Even the mice had a tiny tunnel made for them 
into the cellar where they waited patiently in rows for the doctor to come round to them. One afternoon, when Dr. Doolittle was busy writing a book, Polynesia sat in the window, as she always did, looking out at the leaves, blowing about in the garden. Presently, she laughed aloud. What is it, Polynesia? asked Dr. Doolittle, looking up from his book. I was just thinking, said the parrot, and she went on looking at the leaves. What were you thinking? Section 3 I was thinking about people, said Polynesia. People make me sick. They think they are so wonderful. The world has been going on now for thousands of years, hasn't it? The only thing in animal language that people have learned to understand is that when a dog wags his tail, he means, I am glad. It's funny, isn't it? You are the... When the cat's meat man had gone, the parrot flew off the window onto Dr. Doolittle's table and said that men's got sense. That's what you ought to do. Be an animal doctor. Give the silly people up if they haven't brains enough to see you are the best doctor in the world. Take care of animals. Instead, they'll soon find it out. Be an animal doctor. Oh, there are plenty of animal doctors, said Dr. Doolittle, putting the flower pots outside on the windowsill to get the rain. Section 2 Yes, there are plenty, said Polynesia. But... None of them are good at all. Now, listen doctor, I'll tell you something. Did you know that animals can talk? I know that parrots can talk, said Dr. Doolittle. Oh, we parrots can talk in two languages. People's language and bird's language, said Polynesia proudly. If I say Polly wants a cracker, you understand me. But hear this. Ka, ka, oi, e, fi, fi. Good gracious, cried Dr. Doolittle. What does that mean? That means, is the porridge hot yet? In bird's language. Tell me some more said Dr. Doolittle, all excited. He rushed over to the dresser drawer and came back with a notebook and a pencil. Now, don't go too fast and I'll write it down. This is interesting, very interesting. Something quite new. Give me the birds A, B, C first slowly now. So, that was the way Dr. Doolittle came to know that animals had a language of their own and could talk to one another. All that afternoon, while it was raining, Polynesia sat on the kitchen table, giving him bird words to put down in the notebook. At tea time, when the dog Jip came in, the parrot said to Dr. Doolittle, See, he is talking to you. Section 3 Looks to me as though he is scratching his ear, said Dr. Doolittle. But animals don't always speak with their mouths, said the parrot in a high voice, raising her eyebrows. 
They talk with their ears, with their feet, with their tails, with everything. Sometimes they don't want to make a noise. Do you see now the way he is twitching up one side of his nose? What does that mean? Asked Dr. Doolittle. That means, can't you see that it has stopped raining? Polynesia answered. He is asking you a question. Dogs nearly always use their nose for asking questions. After a while, with the parrot's help, Dr. Doolittle got to learn the language of the animals so well that he could talk to them himself and understand everything they said. Then he gave up being a people's doctor altogether. As soon as the cat meat men had told everyone that Dr. Doolittle was going to become an animal doctor, old ladies began to bring him their pet pugs and poodles who had eaten too much cake and farmers came from many miles to show him sick cows and sheep.